Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Aaron with That Church, and it is Monday morning, and we're starting a new book of the Bible. We're starting in Titus. So I'm going to read the introduction to you, to us, so that when, when we come back on in a few minutes with Pastor Steve, we have a, a basis of what we're talking about. So here we go. Titus, the book of Titus, and I'm reading the introduction out of the Passion Translation. It says, about Titus. Who was this friend of Paul named Titus? He was a Greek convert from Antioch and an apostolic church planter, much like Timothy, his peer. Paul describes him as a true son. He was likely a convert of Paul's ministry during his visit to Cyprus. Legend has it, which we don't go with legend, but <clears throat> legend has it that Titus was a poet and a student of Greek philosophy when he had a prophetic dream that led him to study the Word of God and to become a Christ follower. As God's faithful servant, he traveled with Paul on his third missionary journey. Paul commends him for his love, for his steadfast faith, and for bringing comfort to God's people. After leaving Timothy in Ephesus, Paul accompanied Titus to Crete and left him there to establish the young church and set things in order. Believers who had been in the upper room had returned to Crete and were in need of guidance and leadership from Titus. So that was his calling from God, his place. He had to take his place and come help these people and lead them. Some say Paul wrote his letter to Titus as early as A.D. 57 from Nicopolis, prior to writing 2 Timothy. Others assume that he wrote this letter around the same time as he wrote his first letter to another young pastor, Timothy, around 62 to 63. Titus is one of three letters, commonly known as the pastoral epistles, which also include 1 and 2 Timothy. Paul wrote them as an older pastor to his younger colleagues, Timothy and Titus, to encourage their ministries among God's people and to give further instructions to the churches he planted. The theme of Titus, this is really good, is that right living will always accompany right doctrine. Good words will flow from a solid understanding of God's word. In today's culture, it is easy to say that we follow Christ, but our faith in him will be demonstrated by godly living. An understanding of truth will bring a demonstration of purity through our lives. God's saving grace is the same grace that empowers us to live for him. The book of Titus reminds us that right beliefs should impact every area of our lives, family, relationships, work, and community. So it starts with your, your beliefs, your thinking. It starts there. So that's where we got to start. Purpose. Like his letters to Timothy, Paul wrote this letter to Titus in order to give him instructions for building churches and raising up leaders, because we can't do it all on our own. It was to be considered as a church planting manual, helping this young apostle to encourage godly living and to establish godly churches. It appears that Paul's first letter to Timothy and this one to Titus were both written around the same time given the close parallels in the themes addressed. And you'll hear that as we read. They, they sound very familiar. From church administration to confronting false teaching to maintaining the purity of personal conduct, Paul offered sage advice and pastoral wisdom to these young ministers. In the case of Titus, Paul wrote to address basic catechesic relevant to new believers as well as the kinds of problems <clears throat> expected of a young church in a pagan culture. He also wrote his former companion to ask him to remain in Crete and care for the young church in Paul's absence, as well as to encourage the two companions accompanying the letter. Author and audience. As with the two letters to Timothy, Paul's letter to Titus is a deeply personal one, for it was written from mentor to mentee, from an older, wiser, seasoned pastor to a younger, inexperienced minister. Wouldn't we all appreciate that relationship in our lives? I, I had a mentor one time and it was a real blessing. 
I think it's something that we need to put into practice all the time, having a mentor we can talk to and those we can help along. It's a letter between former colleagues on the front line of missions as Paul sought to give roots to the work they had started together by nurturing the community of believers through Titus's leadership. Like Timothy, Paul had left Titus among his own ethnic people to continue the work they had started as a team, in this case on the Greek island of Crete. As a convert of Paul, his true son in the faith, Titus became a trusted colleague in his gospel work. In fact, many believe the two made a missionary journey to Crete to evangelize the Greek island according to the occurring after the events of Acts 28 and before writing 2 Timothy when Paul was imprisoned. And I'm sure there's many things that happened that weren't written. As a young pastor stewarding a young church plant, Titus must have viewed Paul's letter as a welcomed breeze inflating the sails of his ministry. Can you picture that? Your boat just kind of sitting idly in the in the uh, ocean or wherever or in the lake in the sea <laughs> and a, a wind just blow and it moves you along your way and that's what Paul Paul's letter to Titus was to him and that's what you can your letter can be to other people if you want to send a text leave a voicemail actually write an encouraging letter to somebody think of what that does for them that's ministry. That's loving on people. So there's a few major themes of Titus. They are faith and salvation in Jesus Christ, appointing church leadership, and right living for the sake of the gospel. So I hope that helps you keep that in mind as you, as you read through Titus and think about all that Paul is imparting in Titus. And we will see you in a few minutes with Titus chapter 1. Bye-bye.